Good afternoon and welcome to this virtual meeting of the Executive of our Dalebury Council. My name is Gail Roach, I'm the Democratic Services Manager and for the purpose of today's meeting, I'm also the host assisting the committee with the use of the technology. We are currently live streaming on YouTube and a recording will be made available following the meeting. Shortly, we'll hand you over to the chair, but first we'll do some introductions. Can I ask all attendees to introduce themselves, please? Starting with the members. Councillor Cook. Good afternoon, Councillor Cook, portfolio holder for leisure and tourism. Councillor Fitzgerald. Good afternoon, Councillor Marion Fitzgerald, portfolio holder for policy, governance and people resources. Councillor Johnson. Good afternoon, Councillor Mike Johnson, Leader of the Council. Councillor Lister. Good afternoon, Councillor Lister, uh, portfolio holder for legal and finance. Councillor Markley. Good afternoon, Councillor Tony Markley, portfolio holder for environmental services. Councillor Pitcher. Good afternoon, Councillor Alan Pitcher, portfolio holder for customer experience and innovation. And now the officers, please, Andrew Seekins. Good afternoon, Andrew Seekins, Chief Executive Officer. Sharon Sewell. Good afternoon, Sharon Sewell, Monitoring Officer. Catherine Nicholson. Good afternoon, Catherine Nicholson, Chief Officer, Assets and Section 151 Officer. Nick Hardy. Good afternoon, Nick Hardy, Assistant Chief Executive for Policy, Performance and Economic Strategy. Brendan Carlin. Good afternoon, I'm Brendan Carlin. I'm the Assistant Chief Executive for Innovation and Commercial. Paul Wood. Good afternoon, I'm Paul Wood, Programme Director, Transformation and Operating Model. Graham Wilson. Afternoon, Graham Wilson, Programme Director for Maryport Regeneration. And Kevin Kerrigan. Good afternoon, Kevin Kerrigan, Programme Director for Workington. Thank you, everybody. Please can I remind you all to remain on mute throughout the meeting unless you intend to speak. Please use the raised hand icon to indicate if you wish to speak and only do so when requested to by the chair. And can I remind you all to, when you finish speaking, please remember to lower the hand. I will now hand you over to the chair to formally start the meeting. Councillor Johnson, thank you. Thank you, Gail. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the executive meeting today, Wednesday, the 24th of March, 2021. As previously stated, my name is Councillor Mike Johnson. I am the leader of the council and chair of the executive. You have been introduced to the members and officers in attendance today, so moving on to the agenda. Item one, the minutes. Uh, the minutes are to be agreed as a correct uh, record. The minutes of the meeting held on the 24th of February, 2021. I will assume that all members are in agreement with the minutes unless they use the raise hand function to indicate that they wish to speak. Can members please indicate now? Thank you, the minutes are approved. Item two, apologies. Do we have any apologies, please, Gail? No apologies, Chair, everybody's present today. Thank you. Item three, declaration of interests. Can attendees please use the raise hand function to indicate if you wish to make a declaration? There are no declarations. We'll move on to item four, questions. Do we have any questions, please? No questions have been received, Chair. Yeah. Thank you, Gail. Item five, members announcements. Do any of the executive members have any announcements? Please use the raise hand function to indicate now. <coughs> We have no announcements. So item six, local government reorganization uh, consultation response. It's for me to introduce and move the report. Um, I would like to say that on the 22nd of February, 2021, the Secretary of State for Housing Communities and Local Government launched a consultation on all four proposals that were forthcoming from Cumbria in December regarding local government reorganization. This consultation marks the next step in the process that I personally hope will lead to the creation of unitary authorities in the county. The consultation will run 
until the 19th of April, at which point the Secretary of State will consider all of the submissions and determine which a proposal, if any, is to be implemented. As a local authority that could ultimately be affected by this consultation process, we must prepare a response and also encourage other organisations and individuals to respond. We submitted a proposal to government for what we think is the best option for Cumbria, which is the East-West split. This would create two unitary authorities, but now others must give their views. In terms of developing a response, I'm keen to engage with members of the council to understand their opinions on this issue. We will therefore have to, a full member workshop on the 29th of March, 2021, in addition to the cross-party working groups that we have already got scheduled. In my capacity as leader of the council, I will sign the submission off on the 1st of April to enable the council's decision-making process to be adhered to. I would therefore like to move the recommendations contained within paragraph two of this report. Do I have a seconder, please? Marion, Councillor Fitzgerald. Uh, can I say a word or two about it, Chair, please? You can indeed. Yeah, I, I'm very ha happy to second the report. I've spent quite some time reading not just this proposal for local government reorganisation, but all four of them. Uh, and it's been quite an interesting exercise. Uh, the Carlisle Eden proposal is, as you know, very similar in format to the one before us. Uh, it's only really on page seven of the document and in the section beginning on page 56 that the proposals diverge away from one another uh, with this model favoring, as you said, an east-west split and the county uh, of the county and uh, Carlisle Eden proposing a north-south split. Um, number work is, is similar in both. Uh, I've looked at all the reasons given in support of each proposal and I'm convinced that these in our agenda today are, are stronger. And it's also interesting that in the case for North South, the reasons actually run out three pages earlier than in the East West case. Uh, and that, that's because of the nuclear expertise that we have in, in this area. Um, but there's a lot more to West Cumbria than just that. Um, in Allerdale, we've got two to 3,000 people employed at Sellafield Limited and also a, a sizable part of the nuclear supply chain and the service industries. Everything that happens at Sellafield affects Copeland and Allerdale only slightly less. But it isn't just the nuclear industry alone that binds Allerdale and Copeland together. Historically and culturally, there's a distinct West Cumbrian identity. So what we are proposing here more or less matches the division of the old Cumberland and Westmoreland border. It may be lost in the mists of time, but there probably was very good reason why that border positioned what we now call Allerdale and Copeland together in the first place. I think it would be a big mistake to separate them now. Uh, parish councillors from my ward uh, are supportive. Of, of this uh, this particular bid. Um, some of them attended last week's CALC meeting and they've told me that one supporter of the North-South model stated at the meeting that Eden would not fit with the West Coast, well, that, which is quite remarkable because the speaker must have forgotten that Allerdale, which is included with Carlisle and Eden in the North-South model is on the West Coast. And it's also a, a clear indication that the all important West Cumbrian identity isn't necessarily recognized in the other models that the Secretary of State would be considering. Uh, the wordiest proposal of the four is the one from the Bay. It acknowledges that there's a lot more work to do on that one with regard to consultation with the police and crime commissioners, especially in Lancashire. And the correspondence included in the appendices of the Bay proposal demonstrate that that clearly is the case. Uh, interestingly, the Bay proposal doesn't offer any analysis on the two unitary East-West and North-South models. In fact, it states that they should both be discounted straight away as they do not meet the minister's population criteria. 
which is perhaps a bit short-sighted since the figures do not fall very far short and the Minister has stated that some flexibility will be allowed owing to Cumbria's special characteristics. One of the main selling points in the Bay proposal is that it shares the same footprint as the local NHS structures. A similar point is made in the Carlisle Eden North-South option, but it's interesting that neither one of them acknowledges that there would have to be some change in the health service configuration in at least one part of Copeland. Uh, the Bay proposal does offer some comparison between itself and the County Council's proposal for a single unitary authority. And again, it was reported to me by an attendee at the CALP meeting that the opening salvo in the presentation of the case for a single unitary authority was that it was not a takeover bid by the County Council. Well, I'm, I'm not too sure about that, but the evidence is there that the County Council is already very cumbersome and distant from the people as it is now. And we wouldn't be serving the residents of Cumbria well by creating an even bigger monolithic structure. The present upper tier has significant weaknesses, some of which have persisted for many years, children's services being one of those weaknesses, all of which is detailed between pages 30 and 34 in the document that we're looking at in the agenda today. So we really do need to bring these services closer to the people who require to use them and to the point of delivery rather than more centralisation and raising services even further away from our grasp. The case for the single unitary authority revol revolves mostly around savings. The claim is that the net benefits after taking into account the costs of the change of reorganising to just a single unitary would be over three times the benefits of creating two unitaries. But I'm, I'm not really convinced by that especially when the claims become even more extravagant, deploying, deploying the so-called stretch trans transformation scenario, which anticipates that 186 million pounds worth of savings would be made over five years. But then again, it's, it's not really supposed to be just about saving money. All of these schemes are likely to produce savings after the initial aggregations and disaggregations, which are twin terms, that are often repeated in the single unitary proposal. So our objective here is to do what's right by the people of Cumbria, and in our case today, to ensure the best possible outcome for Allerdale. And with that, I'm very happy to proceed with this model for change as presented in our agenda this afternoon. It plays to our strengths in this area, and most importantly, it recognises and it celebrates the West Cumbrian identity. Thank you. Thank you, Marian. For the vote, I will assume that all members are in agreement with the motion unless they use the raise hand function to indicate that they wish to speak. Please indicate now. Thank you. There were no indications. The motion is approved. I now move that under Section 100A of the Local Government Act 1972, the public be excluded from the meeting for the allowing a, a following agenda item. Uh, on the grounds that it may involve the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph three of part one of schedule 12a of the act. Lee, can we now stop 